All right, so now that we know our patterns, let's put it all together. Um, in the fa past few videos, uh, I introduced you guys to a pattern, and then the only polynomials we saw use that exact pattern. So we got to get a little better with that, because that's not what's going to happen in a lot of situations. We're going to be given a bunch of, uh, in this case, binomials, and we got to figure out, well, do I use this pattern? Do I use that pattern? And then once we figure it out, we use it. So before we uh, tackle this, let's review our patterns. So the first and probably most famous one is known as the difference of squares, right? And we know that that is basically take those bases and we add them and take those bases and we subtract them, right? So uh, there's your factorization or your multiplication of the difference of squares. The next famous pattern is the a cubed minus b cubed, known as the difference of cubes. What we've learned is that these bases, we put them in a binomial or we subtract them, and then we create a trinomial by taking the first term squared, the last term squared, and then we add their product in the middle. And then there's the sum of cubes, where it's very similar, but this time we take the bases and we add them, right? That's in the binomial. And then in the trinomial, first term squared, second term squared, we subtract their product in the middle. So there's basically the patterns we learned. Now let's go see where they apply and apply them. So in number one, I have a difference, I have a subtraction, and I see a square. So this is th making me think, well, this probably is our difference of squares pattern. I just need to make sure, can I write things as squares? Well, the first term, that's 6x squared, and then 25 we know to be 5 squared. So this definitely fits our pattern. Here's your A, and there's your B. So the pattern says we basically take those bases and we add them we take those bases and we subtract them. So your, your factorization is 6x plus 5 times 6x minus 5. It's factored. Again, you check it by foiling it back out. Uh, number two, I'm seeing a difference. I'm seeing a cube. So I'm thinking, okay, well, that might fit the difference of cubes pattern. And so we just need to make sure we have cubes. So that first one, well, that's 2x to the third power. And then 125 is 5 to the third power. So it's definitely the difference of two cubes. Here's your A, and there's your B. So the pattern says, well, let's subtract them. All right? And then it's the first term squared, the last term squared, and then we're going to add their product. So 2x times 5 is 10x. And there's your factorization of that binomial using the, the uh, sum of, excuse me, the difference of cubes. Uh, number three, uh, this one's actually very obvious, right? It is a sum, and I can already see it's two cubes. So I already know what A and B are. So we just need to go use the formula. So we're going to take my bases, x plus y. We're going to add them. We're going to square the first base, square the second base, and subtract their product in the middle. All right, so we're just replacing A with x and B with y. And there was our factorization. So that was an easy one. That one was like in our face. Okay, so let's keep on trucking. Number four, um, let me make sure I get the formulas here. All right, so we have 27x cubed minus 1. Well, I see a difference and I see a cube. So this is getting me to think, well, this is probably the difference of cubes pattern. First term we can rewrite as 3x cubed, and 1 can be whatever I want, including 1 cubed. So it does fit our difference of cubes pattern. So replace a with 3x, replace b with 1, and we got it. So we're going to take those bases and subtract them. We're going to square the first base. We're going to square the second base. And we're going to add their product. So 3x times 1 is 3x. So there's our factorization of number 4 using our difference of cubes pattern. Uh, the next one, I've got some numbers on steroids. We haven't seen these yet, so let's visit them. That way, uh, I do believe a couple of these crazy ones come up in the uh, homework, so we'll be ready. So I'm seeing a sum and I'm seeing a cube. So the first thing I'm thinking is, well, this looks, might behave like the sum of cubes. And we just need to make sure we can write the first and last term as something cubed. Okay, and uh, 2216, right, turns out to be 6 to the third power. All right, so you know, six times six is thirty-six, and then if we multiply, oops, let me do the work here. Right, so six times six is thirty-six, and if I multiply another six, 
6 times 6 is 36, carry the 3. 3 times 6 is 18, plus the 3 is 216. So that's new to us. All right, so we this, so far so good. We do have something cubed right here. 343, all right? Well, just put your thinking caps on. What number is cubed here? Are you thinking 7? You're right. All right, 7 times 7 is 49. And then taking another 7, 9 times 7 is 63. Carry that 6. 4 times 7 is 28, right? And plus that 6 gives us 343. So good. So just add that to your little list, laundry list of perfect cubes. 6 cubed is 216, and 7 cubed is 343. For our purposes, we now know what A and B are. All right, we have the sum of cubes. So we're going to, according to the pattern, we're going to take those two values, two bases, and we're going to add them. We're going to take the first base, and we're going to square it. We're going to take the second base, and we're going to square it. And then we're going to subtract their product. So 6x times 7, right, that is a... 42x. And there is your factorization. All right. So last one. Um, when I initially look at this, I see a difference and I see a cube. All right. Uh, so I'm kind of thinking uh, preliminary that this might be the difference of cubes. However, right, two's not nice. And 18, right, that's, you know, not a nice cube. And then this x over here is risen to the first power. So there are some things in here that kind of destroy it. All right. However, don't panic. Right. We just can't use our uh, our things here. Let's go back through our laundry list. Right. What can we start this with? Well, we can start it with a GCF. Right. If we look closely, two is common, and so is x. So what do we do with the GCF? We pull it out. What gets left behind? Well, we get an x squared minus nine. Right. Do a quick multiplication, and we get that right back. So we've started factoring by using the GCF. And now what you'll notice is if you take a look at this binomial that's left, right, it is a difference and a square, right? And so now we're thinking, well, what's left looks like the difference of squares to me. Of course, uh, x is x squared and 9 is 3 squared. So yeah, that's a difference of squares. So that's x plus 3 and x minus 3. And so what's the full factorization? Well, it's that thing, it's the GCF we pulled out, multiplied to the x plus 3, x minus 3. And that should give you a glimpse of what's coming. Um, we're, we're basically fully factoring a polynomial. We've got everything we need to factor polynomials. So that'll be in 5.6 where we put our flow chart together, and then we practice it like crazy, and hopefully we become very proficient at factoring polynomials because this concept comes up a lot. So make sure you're paying attention, get help where you need it, ask for a virtual office hour, ask your questions on Canvas, right? Lots of places to get help if you just reach out for it. All right, see you guys in the next section.